Ugular venous pulse is changing of ugular veins pressure during the cardiac cycle that reflects changing of right atrial pressure due to straight connection between ugular veins and right atrium. Usually internal ugular vein is used for the most accurate measurements since it is in a direct line with the superior vena cava and the right atrium. The ugular venous pulse contour has three positive waves. A, C and V, and two descent, X and Y. Ugular venous pulse starts from the A wave. The A wave is caused by right atrial systole, during which pressure is transmitted back to the ugular veins by contraction of the right atrium. Since the A wave occurs in late diastole of ventricle, it peaks just before the first heart sound and the carotid pulse upstroke. The next phase is C wave. The C wave is initiated by the onset of right ventricular isovolumetric contraction. With subsequent upward bulging of the tricuspid valve into the right atrium, the C wave is temporarily related to the first heart sound. The X descent considered to be the most obvious motion of the venous pulse. X descent occurs during the systole and ends just before the second heart sound. The early portion of X descent, that is before the C wave, results from the right atrial relaxation during atrial diastole. The latter portion of X descent, that is present just after C wave, reflects the continued fall of right atrial pressure during early ventricular systole as the tricuspid valve ring is pulled caudally by the contracting right ventricle. The next one is V-wave. The V-wave terminates the X descent and results from the inflow of caval blood into the right atrium during a late right ventricular system. When the tricuspid valve is still closed, as the right atrium fills, its pressure begins to rise again. The V wave roughly coincides with the carotid pulse and peak just after the second heart sound. The descending leap of V wave is termed Y descent. An early diastolic event it is caused by the opening of tricuspid valve and the rapid passive inflow of blood from the right atrium into the right ventricle. The Y descent occurs after the second heart sound. The Y descent can be distinguished from the X descent due to the synchronicity of the latter with the carotid pulse. The Y descent occurs out of phase with the carotid pulse. Now let's check the most important changes of ugular venous pulse. The abnormal A wave. The augmented A wave can be tall and canon. The amplitude of the A wave is heightened whenever the right atrium contracts against increased resistance. The tall A wave usually absorbed in case of right ventricular hypertrophy, right ventricular infarction, or tricuspid stenosis. Canon A wave describes exaggerated A wave that is usually absorbed in case of different rhythm and conductivity disorder. For explaining this, let's firstly check causes of tall A wave. Tricuspid stenosis means narrowing of tricuspid valve orifice that lead to decreasing orifice radius. Resistance is inversely related to the force power of radius, so in case of tricuspid stenosis, resistance is increased. That lead to increasing of right atrial pressure, that in its turn creates tall A wave. In case of right ventricular hypertrophy and infarction, compliance of right ventricle decreases. It means the same right ventricular volume causes higher right ventricular pressure that in its turn again lead to increasing of right atrial pressure. Augmented right atrial pressure causes tall A wave. In all of these cases, enhanced right atrial contraction and subsequently pressure, 
constitutes an important compensatory contribution to changes of right ventricles properties. One of the cases of canon A wave are ventricular tachycardia and complete heart block. Both of them are characterized by atrioventricular dissociation that lead to loss of atrioventricular synchrony and atria contracts independently from the ventricle cycle. So, in time of atrial contraction, tricuspid valve is closed. The other causes of canon A wave are atrioventricular nodal reentry tachycardia due to retrograde atrial depolarization, second degree of AV block type 1 when P without QRS is inside the previous QT interval, ventricular premature beats when next P wave inside the QT interval of premature beat, and severe first degree AV block. All of these cases characterized by contracting of atria against closed tricuspid valve as it lead to rapid increasing of right atrial pressure and in its turn makes canon A wave. The A wave won't be absorbed during periods of atrial asystole, such as in case of atrial fibrillation, atrial flatter or sinus arrest. One of the most important changes of ugular venous pulse is caused by tricuspid regurgitation. The regurgitation jet from the right ventricle to the right atrium during the right ventricular systole causes right atrium volume overload that lead to impaired right atrium relaxation. As we already know that X descent is responsible for right atrium relaxation so, in case of tricuspid regurgitation, X descent will be attenuated or even absent. Also, right atrium volume overload leads to augmentation of V wave, because in this case, right atrium obtained blood from the vena cava system and additional blood from the regurgitation jet that lead to increasing of V wave that is responsible for right atrium filling. Also flow through the tricuspid valve increases, because the pressure gradient between the right atrium and the right ventricle increases, that lead to steep wide descent that is responsible for the right ventricle filling. So, in case of tricuspid incompetence, ugular venous pulse contour due to X descent attenuation has CV peak, that also can be called Lancisi site. The next case is constrictive pericarditis. In case of constrictive pericarditis, due to constriction, a relatively larger amount of atrial relaxation and filling occurs following ventricular contraction. Since as blood is ejected to the great vessel during ventricular systole, ventricular volume transiently falls, enabling atrial expansion and filling that lead to rapid drop of atrial pressure. Rapid fall of atrial pressure during ventricular ejection lead to steep X descent. Also due to constriction, ventricular filling is impaired and ventricular stroke volume is reduced. For a brief period linearly diastole, ventricular filling is rapid. However, the limit of ventricular distensibility is soon reached, that lead to rapid and fast drop of right atrium pressure during the right ventricular filling, that is reflected as steep wide descent on the ugular venous pulse contour. Steep wide descent is also known as Friedrich sign. So, as a result of constrictive pericarditis, both prominent X descent and Y descent make W-shaped contour. The other case of ugular venous pulse changing is cardiac tamponade. The cardiac tamponade is characterized by accumulation of fluid between the pericardium layers. Accumulation of fluid causes pressure on all heart chambers. As a result, right atrial relaxation and filling 
occur during rapid ventricular ejection because ventricular volume transiently falls, enabling atrial expansion and filling. These changes lead to rapid drop of right atrial pressure, therefore steep X descent. A unique feature of cardiac tamponade is the continuous compression of the heart throughout the cardiac cycle. This limits the fall in ventricular pressure during early diastole and thus causes a decrease in normal atrium to ventricular pressure gradient. This in turn restricts the amount of early diastolic filling of ventricles and blunts white descent. If you like the content, press like, subscribe our Telegram and YouTube channel and have a good day. Here we go.